Welcome, welcome. Today we are talking about what are the three must know items when you take your principles and practice of land surveying exam. I took my PS exam a while ago. And when I took the exam, I had just got started in my PhD. And I was also, if I remember correctly, I was teaching a legal aspects of surveying course, just one course at the time, uh, to make a little extra money. And I studied and studied and studied for the PS because I was taking the PS in the morning and the Florida specific in the last two hours of the afternoon. So I was a little nervous. And I really had no idea what to expect. There is so much stuff listed in the PS blueprint. I'm talking about legal aspects, riparian, ALTA, FEMA flood standards, survey accuracy and precision, a huge compendium of information. And I had no idea what to expect. So I showed up, took the PS exam, and I can tell you when I took it years ago, let's just say I had a lot of flashbacks from Brown's boundary control. Maybe it's because I like the legal aspects the most out of all surveying topics, but I felt like this was an exam on Brown's boundary control with extra stuff on the periphery. Now, that is not completely true because you're gonna have Alta questions, you're going to have FEMA, other things mixed in. But I felt like if you had, if you were better than average on the legal aspects of surveying, you could pass this exam. All right, so I promised you three must know topics. Well, let's go through them. Number one is the priority of calls. You should expect to get a simple question. What is the proper hierarchy of the priority of calls? Natural, artificial, bearing distance, area. Easy. You will also get priority of calls questions that are kind of like clothed in practical situations. And what I mean by that is it'll say, um, you are John Smith, professional land surveyor. You are surveying Blackacre. You run a distance of 100 feet, but you find a monument a foot farther down the line. Do you hold the 100 feet or do you hold the, 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 the two monument line? A, B, and then some other random junk. So there's practical scenarios in the priority of calls, and there's also simple list. All right. Continuing on with this uh, <clears throat> legal aspect school of thought, you are also going to get questions about where to find legal documents like deeds. And in the same, we'll call this category number two, legal aspects extras, you're gonna get questions about junior senior rights. And I, the PS is really fun these days because it's no more just multiple choice they can give you a full size diagram. And there's a dotted line, there's a dashed line, there's a hatched area. This is a really fancy graphic. And they're gonna say something like, you are surveying White Acre. You read the following deeds. What is the proper location of White Acre? And you click whatever line you think separates White Acre from Black Acre. Well, to do that, you're gonna to have to apply junior senior rights. So White Acre was deeded in 1920, Black Acre was deeded in 1953. There's an overlap, who gets the land? Well, it's gonna be White Acre because it's 1920 with some exceptions. And finally, this is something kind of new, is the ALTA standards. The PS exam loves the ALTA standards. What is required? what is optional, what is the positional tolerance. What's required is in the ALTA standard, what is optional is in table A, that is included in the reference materials on your computer in the exam, and number three is going to be 
the positional tolerance, which of course is in the ALTA standards on the first few pages. So legal aspects prior to your calls, legal aspects junior senior rights, ALTA standards. Those are three prime topics for the PS exam. Now let me give you a bonus suggestion here. I had a gentleman call me up years ago and he said, I just took the PS. I cannot tell you anything about it because it's a violation of the rules, which is completely true. Don't tell us about the exam. But if I were a betting man, I would tell the next person that many, many, many answers are in the references. Not only do you get your exam window to answer A, B, C, or D, but you also get this reference material on the computer in a PDF. You click the reference material, it pulls up the PDF. It's like hundreds of pages. Well, many questions on FEMA standards are in the reference material. Many answers to ALTA questions are in the reference material. Many questions about positional accuracy, the FGCC, other sources, it's in the reference material. So if you've got the time and you've got kind of a, um, an interesting question that could be in standards or specifications or rules, go to the reference material. It's worth it. If you found this video helpful and informative, I would appreciate it if you would hit the thumbs up button to like the video and then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way, more people can find this video and it can help them. Plus, when you hit the subscribe button, you'll be able to watch the newest NLC videos as soon as they come out.